the Smith & Wesson Model 64, let's check it out. going old school. The Smith & Wesson Model 10 is the most produced revolver in the world. Over 6 million were made. All the way through the 1900s and even today these are still being produced by Smith & Wesson. A very solid firearm. Uh, they came with a tapered barrel. They came with of course this heavy barrel and a lot of other designs and barrel links in between. But this was actually the third handgun that I ever purchased and so it really has a special place for me. Uh, one thing that I've always though wanted was a stainless steel version. So in 1970, Smith & Wesson introduced their Model 64. This was used by the NYPD from 74 all the way to 1993. This was the handgun that they used and a lot of other police agencies all around. And definitely because of it being stainless steel, it was corrosion resistant and it was easy to maintain. And so it made a really great firearm, especially during those years when police carried revolvers. Now this Model 64 actually is a police trade-in. It came from AIM Surplus. Uh, and they get a lot of different police trade-ins. It's a good place to look for good use solid guns. Uh, I think at this point right now the Model 64 was in and already out of stock. But a lot of times they get these in at different times. And guys, I highly recommend picking up police trade-ins because most of them are carried a lot and shot little. Now the Model 64 is based on the K-frame. It has everything to do with the size of the frame. There's a J-frame, a K, L frame, which are pretty close. And then the N-frame is more for their larger revolvers. The K-frame has been very popular for a number of years. Now this is a 4-inch heavy barrel. And uh, they did make a tapered barrel as well, especially on the Model 10. And so this gives it just to me a little more balance. It does add to the half to it, but 38 Special is not really big on recoil. Now we're gonna go ahead and push the cylinder, bring it out, push the cylinder latch, and it is empty, uh, very smooth. It's one of the things about Smith & Wesson. And then when you wanna eject the rounds, you just push out on the ejector rod. And this brings the rounds out. Uh, but these are really in very good shape. Uh, sadly, <laughs> uh, they are out of stock on these. They may be getting some more. But the big thing is with AIM is they always have different police trade-ins. And so it's a great source. I'm on their newsletter. I love getting different notifications of what they have in stock. Uh, this does have a synthetic grip to it. Um, it's not really a Hogue or Pacmire. I think this may have been one of the factory grips that they just included. Uh, maybe even an Uncle Mike's. But... Um, it's good and solid grip. Uh, this is the square butt, which they did make a round butt, which is a little more concealable, but the this is more for service, combat, or target. Now this model in particular is the Model 64-8. Here you can see on the inside of the crane, 64-8. Now this is the last version of the Model 64, uh, and there's some things that denote this from different ones. It goes all the way up from 1 to 8, and each one is some kind of improvement or change with the firearm. One thing that I really like about the Model 8, and actually all the way down to the Model Dash 6, is that the firing pin is not attached to the hammer. Uh, it has a floating firing pin, and this makes it safe, drop safe, and two, the, the firing pin can get damaged if it's on the hammer. And to give you an illustration, we'll bring out the Model 10. Here we have the firing pin attached to the hammer. And so this is really the way that revolvers were made for a long time. So we've got it just there. It just makes it a little more vulnerable to me. But here we have the two side by side, uh, both heavy barrels. One thing about the frame is it looks really narrow here, but because of this grip, it covers up part of the frame. 
And so at first, actually, I was thinking this may be a bigger frame, but it's not. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference here with the cut. It's a little bit more pronounced with the Model 10. And there are some definite differences here with the uh, cylinder release latch. You can see it's actually a different style. But overall, these are a lot alike. Now, one thing that the Model Dash 8 differentiated itself from the 7 is that it has a two-piece barrel. And Smith & Wesson has actually gone to that with all their new revolvers. You can see there's a seam right here. On the Model 10, it's just a solid barrel. And so that is one of the differences as well. It is a six-shot revolver, as we looked at, and it is double single action. And that means that when you pull the trigger with a hammer down, it'll fire. It's a long trigger pull. It's fairly heavy. And then you can actually bring it back and pre-cock it, and this is single action. Crisp, very light trigger pull. And so that's why you don't need a safety because this, the trigger pull on this is fairly hefty. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Here you have your ejector rod that is exposed. Some of the new revolvers actually have a shroud right here to protect it. But uh, have a little latch here fixed front ramp sight, and then we have just a notch on the back. These are combat sights. These are made to be quick and fast and snag free. Okay, the NYPD carried these for years, and it's one of the things that makes it really easy to draw out of the holster. But the sights are not that great, but honestly, they're not bad when you're at the range. The top of the barrel and frame have a matte finish to it. Gives, keeps the glare down. Hammer has nice serrations on here to be able to thumb cock it. <laughs> Brings it back. Um, then we have a smooth trigger. And then of course the serrations right here on the cylinder release. And one thing you'll notice is the little trigger lock right here. A lot of people hate that. Some people call it the Hillary hole. I don't like it either, but it does lock down the trigger. Uh, you can actually get a piece to replace it, a little plug, and you can remove the parts. So there is a kit to do that if that really bugs you that much. But you can see the finish uh, is actually really well done. Uh, and that's one thing about stainless. Even if you do have scuffs, you can polish it out or buff it out because that is the finish. We have Smith & Wesson on the barrel. And on this side, it says 38 Smith & Wesson Special plus P, which these are rated for plus P. Okay, we're going to check trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brown Ales. Uh, hopefully, we can get a reading on the double action. Sometimes it's pretty stout. Here we go. 10 pounds, 7.1 ounces. 10 pounds, 3.8 ounces. Single action. 2 pounds, 12.4 ounces. 2 pounds, 9.6 ounces. Now this double action, I mean all the way back, it's just super smooth. One thing you need to do though is, a lot of times we're worried about reset, you've got to completely release the trigger for it to reset. But it is so smooth, even at 10 pounds. Now we're gonna go ahead and try single action. Man, that is a crisp, clean break. Incredible. Again, see how you have to pop the trigger all the way out. Weight on the Model 64. Two pounds, 3.6 ounces. All right, we got some Fiocchi. Uh, this is 130 grain full metal jacket. We have some arms core we're using. We have some old HPR, and we're just gonna go through different rounds. And I wanna thank though Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo and uh, all made in the USA. This good quality stuff. Goes in smooth like butter. Now, as far as the range goes, this gun is all steel and it weighs quite a bit. So when you're shooting 38 Special, it's not any problem. And then when you move it up to 38 Special plus P, it just comes back in your hand a little bit, but it feels better to shoot for some reason. It just kind of gives you a little more power. Uh, not a lot of muzzle flip, it's just a good solid firearm. And one problem is with ladies, a lot of times is them having the finger reach to get to the trigger. Uh, it's one of the things that Sarah Mac has some issues with sometimes, just being able to get to that trigger to pull it. Uh, so, you know, that is one thing you want to check if you're planning to buy 
a revolver for self-defense, home defense, and your wife is available to it. Uh, yeah, you get it back to single action, you can do it, but that double action trigger pull is kind of tough. Uh, the one thing about this particular firearm, and Smith firearms in general, the, the trigger pull is really nice. Uh, with this one, it is super smooth all the way through like we've shown, and uh, the single action is really crisp and really has a clean break to it. And so, guys, um, you know, we didn't have any issues with it at all. Of course, you know, not really any kind of malfunctions. It just fired. And that's one of the things about a revolver that makes it nice. But what I really like is how it just slows things down a bit. You know, you take your time. You've only got six rounds, so you shoot through them. And it just helps with your basic fundamentals. Even though this is a totally different setup than an automatic, it definitely uh, is related to the same fundamentals, sight picture, grip, Guys, I'll tell you, again, a revolver is definitely something that I highly recommend for anyone, at least to take to the range and shoot. Now, one of the big reasons why I like police trade-ins is because the value you get for the price. Uh, these run on the Smith & Wesson website, $693. Uh, on the AIM Surplus, these were running $369. And so you can see you get a lot of value. Yeah, you may have some scuffs, it may have some wear on them, but typically they're really good shooting firearms. Even market price right now for a brand new Model 64 is around $599. Now guys, again, I got this from AIM Surplus, and there are a lot of different police trade-ins that they carry, uh, and a lot of times some of them come in for a little bit, and they get gone. And that's one of the things about the Model 64. Hopefully, they'll be bringing some more in, and they do that very regularly. So keep your eye out on AIM. It's a great source for surplus and police trade-ins. Guys, I highly recommend having a revolver in your collection. It opens up a whole new world. I know we live in this semi-automatic, you know, uh, high capacity, polymer frame, striker fire world. But taking this old steel wheel gun out to the range is again, just a whole nother experience. And while a lot of these revolvers new are very expensive, finding a good police trade-in or a used revolver is a great way to go. And again, I want to thank AIM Surplus for sending the Model 64 for this test and evaluation. Uh, we had a lot of fun. They've always got some of the coolest guns. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Going old school. 38 special or for 357. I don't care. What am I talking about? I don't even really just saying this stuff. That's nice. Robbie's big old shadow, like, woo! It's a US model. It's a UFR, unidentified flying Robbie. Full metal jacket. And uh, this is 357 Magnum and a 38. This does not work. I was like, why is this thing not doing that? Solar eclipse. Yeah, we maybe we need another solar eclipse. Here. No, Both of these are 357. That's fine, we got a 357. <laughs> the good year play. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you call me Blimpy. Just kidding, probably. Definitely not Jerry Mitchell. <laughs>